Hello everybody, it's Emery48 here and welcome back to another Star Wars video. We're continuing in the Clone Wars Gambit series by Karen Miller. This novel is Siege. It is in the Legends timeline and takes place in 21 BBY. Chapter 1. After about an hour flying away from the city, Obi-Wan fell asleep. When he woke up two hours later, Anakin was still flying. They could sense the largest village yet and determined it would be a good place to go and then their speeder ran out of fuel. They crash-landed before arriving at the village. Once they got out of the speeder, they cut it up with their lightsabers and scattered the pieces under dirt. They then began their hike towards the village as the sun rose. After hiking over a couple of hills, they found the village, a place for miners and their families to live next to the Damatite mine. Once they entered the village, a woman drove up to greet them and wanted to know what the pair want. Obi-Wan and Anakin are still going by their Lantiban names in case there is a Separatist presence in the village. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, the previous video last week was about Stealth, which is the book that is directly before this, and all of the events in Stealth lead in to Siege. Chapter 2. Dooku sensed something wrong on Lantib. He called General Locke Durd, who lied about what was wrong, only stating that he had to kill one of the hostages to get Fernan back to work. Durd did not include anything about Jedi on Lantib. It seemed Dooku believes the story. After the call was completed, Durd threw up a couple of times, terrified that he lied to Dooku. Durd met with Colonel Berev, the replacement for the previous colonel he had executed. Durd told Berev how important it was that the Jedi are captured. He also wants Berev to prepare their new location. Durd informed Bantina of their move the following day. Durd has also beaten her, making sure to only hit hard enough to bruise, not break any bones. Bale met with Trin Netzel. They argued a bit about various things, but Bale told Trin he was confident he would succeed in creating an antidote. It seems like no matter who Bale is friends with, they always butt heads, but get along in the end. Chapter 3. Bale met with Yoda, and they discussed the overall Lantib situation. Bale then met with Padme about an upcoming Senate vote. She was worried that there was no news, but had faith in Obi-Wan and Anakin's abilities. Bale was then approached by Mon Mothma in the Senate dining hall. She informed Bale that the planet Umgol is being visited by Dooku, who is trying to convince the planet to leave the Republic after the latest rise in taxes. Mon Mothma wants to discuss the issue with Bale after the vote. Ahsoka went and visited Rex and Korok who earlier that day had returned to Coruscant from the Med Center. Taria asked Ahsoka to be a team captain against her in a training mission. One of the levels of the Jedi Temple was a complete city block to train on, and Taria was going to lead one group of Padawans, while Ahsoka led the others in a race to complete the mission. Both of the teams lost most of their Padawans to simulated deaths. Ahsoka's team started with 11 Padawans in a 3-minute head start. Taria's team had 12 Padawans. The training ended in a tie with two Padawans from each team reaching the beacon at the same time. If this had been real life, the other 19 Padawans would be dead. Chapter 4. Obi-Wan and Anakin woke in Tiba Jacqueline's storage room of her hut after 20 hours of sleeping. Jacqueline is a teacher and one of the leaders of the village, Torbal. She invited Teeb Ricard, the head miner, over for breakfast and to meet Obi-Wan and Anakin as Teeb's Yavid and Markle. Jacqueline and Rickard have agreed to let Yavid and Markel stay in Torbal and mine while they are here. Rickard and Jacqueline revealed the reason the mine in Torbal is so successful. They have a pill that keeps their miners safe from the toxic Damatite, something other villages do not know about. Chapter 5. Obi-Wan and Anakin got a ride from Tiba Devi to the comms hub after using the force to convince Rickard to let them go to the hub. There they found the comm equipment was too outdated to send anything to Coruscant without destroying it. The new plan is to stay in Torbal for three days, working in the mines until the droid convoy comes to pick up Damatite. They will hide on the convoy, return to the city, and their old hideout. From there, they can contact Yoda. Durd destroyed all ten battle droids he had stationed in Bantina's lab when she only said she had made progress. She has figured out a way that allows the toxin to be made into a larger batch that calmed him down. After replacing the battle droids, Durd left and met with Berev, who suggested hiring a bounty hunter, a psychic seeker, to find and kill the Jedi. Chapter 6. 
Yoda met with Palpatine in private to discuss the war. Yoda only mentioned that Obi-Wan and Anakin were on a mission off of Coruscant, but would not mention any details. Yoda met with Netzel to get a progress report on the antidote. Netzel is still a ways away from creating an antidote. Yoda called Mace and informed him that he must stay on Cothless a bit longer. Taria visited Yoda and asked permission to travel to Lanteve to help Obi-Wan and Anakin. Yoda denied the request, saying they had to trust in the Force and their abilities as Jedi to get them home safely. Sidious called Dooku and got updates from Umgol and Lanteve. Chapter 7 after exploring the village for a couple hours, Obi-Wan and Anakin regrouped with Rickard, who brought them into the mines and introduced them to his son, Arad. Arad is going to lead them for the day while Rickard works in the refinery. Obi-Wan felt a cold presence in the Force and told Anakin they could not risk using the Force as they are being hunted. Berev and Durd met the bounty hunter, a Drivok from the wild space planet Faket. The Drivok was able to sense the Jedi and their location. After a 10-hour day in the mines, Obi-Wan and Anakin walked back to Jacqueline's home where they intend to meditate on the new sense of darkness they feel coming after them. Chapter 8, when Obi-Wan and Anakin returned to Jacqueline's home, she said that she got good reviews from people throughout the village and she had stew ready for them to eat before bed. Obi-Wan and Anakin were woken up by sirens announcing an oncoming Theta storm. Jacqueline asked for help from Yavid and Markle, but Obi-Wan answered more scientifically than a simple farmer should have, which raised suspicion from Jacqueline. Anakin played it off well, saying that Obi-Wan read books on occasion and liked to say things like he knew them. Obi-Wan went to the power plant to help Devi, where the systems that used Damatite as fuel were going critical. Obi-Wan had to go and manually unclog one of the pieces. Anakin has gone to check on the storm shield generators during the storm. Anakin met Tarnik, who was also checking up on the system of generators. Anakin Force sprinted to the other side of the village to check the other bank of generators, while Tarnik kept checking the first half. Obi-Wan succeeded in keeping the power plant from exploding. One of the generators failed as Anakin approached it. Anakin used the Force to protect himself from the storm, but felt his blood boiling. Taria, Ahsoka, and Yoda sense something has gone wrong. The Drivok can sense exactly where the Jedi are with their large use of the Force. There is a power surge about to happen which will ground the refinery. Obi-Wan Force sprinted to the refinery to try and prevent it. A group of villagers is watching Anakin hold off the storm, stunned because that is not something a farmer from another village would be able to do. Chapter 9 Obi-Wan went to the refinery to evacuate it. A rod refused to leave. He and Obi-Wan argued for a bit. When Obi-Wan realized he could not convince Arad, he tapped a point on his neck and used the force to knock him out. Obi-Wan started dragging Arad out of the refinery, but not before it exploded. Anakin sent Jacqueline to find Yavid. Even though she knows he is not who he says he is, Anakin is still using his Lanteban name. Gin got the generator back on so Anakin could stop taking the force of the storm. He then went looking for Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan talked with Jacqueline, who revealed that she knows he is a Jedi. Obi-Wan revealed his and Anakin's names. Jacqueline told Obi-Wan that Arad was in the sick house, badly wounded, along with eight others from the explosion. Obi-Wan began heading for the sick house. He met up with Anakin on the way and sent him to the power plant to help Devi and Ricard prevent any more power surges. When Obi-Wan made it to the sick house, he spoke with Tiba Sufi, a former nurse, offering to help with Arad's wounds. Chapter 10, Sufi did not want a Jedi's help, believing the propaganda from the Separatists about the Jedi. Greti wanted Obi-Wan to heal her mother's infection she had gotten from an accident with Damatite on her hand. Greti's mother, Bol, was dying and Sufi was unable to heal her. Sufi agreed reluctantly to let Obi-Wan use the Force on Bol. If he succeeded, then she would let him heal other patients, too. Obi-Wan successfully removed the infection from Bol and was allowed to work on Arad, who was the most injured with multiple broken bones. Obi-Wan was able to mend the broken bones, stop the internal bleeding in Arad's stomach, and help the damage done to his brain. Ricard was grateful but furious for the lie at the same time. Ricard, Jacqueline, Obi-Wan, and Anakin spoke. The Jedi revealed what the Damatite was used for and why they were on Lanteeb. This convinced Ricard to let Obi-Wan and Anakin use and likely destroy the comm hub to communicate with the Jedi Temple. Connection was not strong enough for an actual conversation. All Obi-Wan could send was part of a message. He wants them to send a fleet to take control of the planet. 
Yoda called Bail so he could hear the message. Yoda does not want to send a fleet yet. Yoda and Bail agree it is finally time to let Palpatine in on the mission. They have both agreed to let Yoda do most of the talking in this meeting. Chapter 11. Palpatine was unhappy that he was informed so late in the mission. Sidious was furious that Dooku had failed him and that his bioweapon plan may be thwarted before even one use. Sidious tried to call Dooku, but he did not answer. After dropping Yoda back off at the Jedi Temple, Bail went to Padme's apartment and gave her the update. He has narrowed it down and thinks it is Anakin she is in love with, although she did not reveal any preference, just the hope that they both make it home safe. Dooku contacted Palpatine and updated him on the difficulties he's been having in, at Umgol. It was then Palpatine's turn to update Dooku on Lanteeb. Dooku was shocked to hear what was going on on Lanteeb. Palpatine wants Durd scared but alive and has not ordered Dooku to Lanteeb, so Obi-Wan and Anakin will neither be captured or killed. Palpatine needs to keep Anakin safe until he can turn him. Dooku contacted Durd and told him that he knows that he has been lying. After the call, Durd had Berev change the droid's orders to capture the Jedi, not kill them, so he could give them as prisoners to Dooku. Durd also wants to prepare an assault of a Republic planet with the new bioweapon to show Dooku how useful it can be, which is something Dooku did not ask for and does not know about. This surely can't end well for Durd if he attempts to launch an attack without the approval of Sidious or Dooku. Chapter 12, Obi-Wan and Anakin helped around the village. Then the storm went away so they could open the shield and let out the smoke from the fire. As soon as the shield was opened, a droid army entered, firing upon the villagers. Once the droids spotted Obi-Wan and Anakin, they switched to stun rounds. Obi-Wan got the shield back up before the entire army came in, and they destroyed the droids that did get into the village before the shield was reignited. A couple of villagers have died. Chapter 13, Ricard and Jacqueline listen to Obi-Wan and Anakin's plans, respectively. Obi-Wan wants to surrender to the droids in the hopes that the droids leave the village alone. Anakin wants to strengthen the storm shield so it will withstand an assault from the droid army and only surrender if absolutely necessary. Even though Jacqueline is very angry with the Jedi for their lies and causing the death of villagers, her and Ricard seem to prefer Anakin's plan. Although because of the severity of the decision, Ricard and Jacqueline are going to call a village meeting and let everyone vote on the two proposed choices. Obi-Wan promised to follow whichever the villagers choose. Obi-Wan is unhappy that Anakin did not follow his lead and presented a different option. Obi-Wan went back to help those in the sick house. Ricard and Jacqueline told Anakin he needed to mend whatever damage this disagreement did to their relationship for the benefit of all in the village. Anakin went to the sick house and spoke with Obi-Wan, patching up the dispute a bit. Anakin then joined Devi in the power plant where they upgraded the storm shield to withstand a droid attack. An hour after the meeting started, the village voted to let the Jedi stay. Immediately, the droids started firing upon the shield. After a couple hours without penetrating, they stopped firing. Obi-Wan and Anakin prepared to rest for the night, with the droid army still waiting outside the shield. Chapter 14, Durd targeted Chandrilla with the bioweapon and killed 10,000 people. Yoda, Bale, and Mon Mothma met with Palpatine. They discussed the aftermath of the attack. After Mon Mothma left Palpatine's office, he explained how disappointed he was in Bale and Yoda for not informing him earlier, and on top of that, failing to prevent an attack. Palpatine then ordered Lanty be taken back under Republic control, utilizing the battle group still waiting on Coruscant after its repairs from the Cothless battle. Bale informed Trin of the attack on Chandrilla. Trin was furious that Bale told him, saying the last thing he needed was more pressure thinking every time he doesn't get the solution right, 10,000 people will die. Chapter 15, Palpatine called Dooku. He was shocked to find Dooku had not known of the attack. Sidious has ordered Dooku to send Grievous to blockade Lanteeb from the Republic battle group on its way. He wants Grievous to stall the Republic's ships in a siege to deal more damage and at some point allow for Durd to escape Lanteeb. Padme met with Bale. She came up with a plan to recruit a civilian fleet to assist Admiral Yularen in taking back Lanteeb, another plan that will keep Palpatine in the dark. Yoda told Ahsoka she is joining the battle group to Lanteeb. She said goodbye to Taria before meeting up with Rex and the rest of Torrent Company to prepare for her departure. The Jedi Council unanimously agreed that Mace Windu should leave Cothless and join the battle group headed for Lanteeb, even though that goes against Palpatine's wishes. 
When do did assure Yoda that Kothlis and Bothui will not leave the Republic if he leaves Kothlis, which was Palpatine's fear. Yoda has left to inform Palpatine of the Council's decision. Chapter 16. Obi-Wan and Anakin continued helping around the village. As they finished making repairs to one of the shield generators, they felt the presence of other Jedi in space above Lanteeb, and they both cried in relief. Chapter 17. Mace Windu and Ahsoka arrived with four ships. They were met by 25 Separatist ships blockading Lanteeb, led by General Grievous. Mace Windu called the Jedi Temple and informed Yoda. Dirge showed Bantina the news from Chandrilla and what she helped create. Bantina went to the bathroom and threw up. Dirge revealed that his next target was Bespin. Dirge then left to go talk with Grievous about the New Republic ships in Lanteeb space. Bantina used the comm unit in Dirge's office to call her mother and tell her to tell the Jedi that Bespin was the next target. Her mother told her that everyone but Sam Sam had been rescued. Bantina, now knowing what Dirge had been saying about her family and friends recently was a lie, knew she was ultimately free. Palpatine wants to send a battle group to defend Bespin. Yoda, Bale, and Padme wanted those ships to go help Atlantib, but Palpatine pulled the rank and made his decision final. Yoda came up with a new plan after Palpatine left the call. He is going to send Taria in a captured Separatist ship to Lanteeb, have her sneak through Grievous' blockade and destroy the compound with the bioweapon. Chapter 18. Obi-Wan and Anakin fielded complaints from the villagers led by Jacqueline. Greddy and Devi defended them and kept the villagers' resolve strong. Obi-Wan and Greddy worked on healing the sick and wounded. Greddy is strong in the force, but too old to be brought back for proper training. So instead, Obi-Wan has been giving her some advice and teachings of the force while he is there so she can help as a healer in the village once he is gone. Republic fighters engaged Separatist vulture droids over Lanteeb and staged a fake attack against Taria in her newly arriving Separatist ship. They staged engine damage to her ship after hitting her a little into the battle, which meant she could make a controlled crash landing onto Lanteeb. There was now a full-on space battle raging with fighters from each side after Taria went to the surface. Taria safely landed on Lanteeb. She had a detonator and a body of an already dead person Bale was able to gather from special ops. She set off the bomb in the ship once she was out of the ship and left the scene before the emergency response team arrived. Taria headed for the city and Dirt's compound. Chapter 19. Padme and Bale worked on trying to get a civilian fleet together, but without an antidote to protect against the bioweapon, no planets wanted to anger the Separatists at all. They only have two squads of fighters from Naboo so far. Taria broke into the compound with explosives and met Bantina, who did not want to be saved, especially since she has a collar on that would kill her if she leaves the compound anyway. Bantina convinced Taria to leave the explosives with her. She will set them off and Taria can go rescue Obi-Wan and Anakin. As Dirt was heading back to the compound, it exploded. Dirt turned back for the spaceport and killed Berev for failing him and so Berev could not tell Dooku how Dirt had failed. Dirt then called Grievous and told him he is going to rendezvous with the blockade as Lanteeb is not safe for him. Taria made it to the village. Anakin lowered the shield long enough for her to get in. She was shot in the back, but Bale had procured a protective bodysuit, so the shot never penetrated skin. She was just knocked over and winded from the force of the blast. Taria informed Obi-Wan and Anakin of everything that has happened since they got trapped in Torbal. They think the pills the villagers use in Torbal could help Trin finish the antidote. Chapter 20. Taria's illness was out of remission, and she could not stand. Anakin went to find an anti-grav sled for her. While Anakin was gone, Taria comforted Obi-Wan. Anakin, waiting before approaching again, saw Obi-Wan kiss Taria on the lips. Anakin was furious, thinking everything Obi-Wan has said about attachment was a lie. They contacted Mace Windu and sent him a sample of the medication for Damatite and left Taria in the sick house. Obi-Wan reassured Anakin that even though they are in love, they are friends and nothing more than that now. Anakin relaxed because he knew Obi-Wan was telling the truth. Obi-Wan revealed to Anakin that her condition was out of remission and does not think she will survive. Anakin went back to the power plant to help Devi and Obi-Wan went to get Greti for help with Taria. With the new information from Lanteeb, Trin was able to complete the antidote. With the antidote done, Padme and Bale were getting planets to join the civilian fleet and they are heading to Padme's apartment to coordinate the fleet. 
Obi-Wan and Coretti healed Taria for three hours, trying to remove some of the pain. Although she was slightly improved, she was still asleep. Obi-Wan and Ricard left the sick house to go to the power plant to help there. Anakin is going to upgrade the shield again, but this will mean the fuel will run out even quicker, in two days. Devi and Ricard decided that Obi-Wan and Anakin needed rest. As village speaker, Ricard ordered them to three hours rest so they would be ready for whatever happens if the shield fails. Taria comforted Obi-Wan, telling him she did something meaningful. Even though it would hasten her death, it made her life mean more. Chapter 21 Yoda informed Admiral Yularen and the Republic fleet that a civilian fleet was on its way and would arrive in a couple of hours. Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Taria, who has just woken up, are training the villagers to fight like the Magnificent Seven. Mace Windu made contact with Taria, Obi-Wan, and Anakin, telling them the civilian fleet has arrived and they are beginning a full-on assault. One of the generators was damaged by constant droid firing at the shield. The shield began to fail. Anakin plunged himself into the force through one of the generators to try and buy the village some more time. The old and wounded villagers headed down the mine to stay safe from the droid attack, along with the women and children, while the fit villagers and the Jedi prepared for the droids advance in a matter of minutes when the shield failed. Taria gave an encouraging war speech to the 30 villagers who have volunteered to fight on the front lines. The shield failed, and the droid army opened fire on the village. Yularen's battle group, with the help of the civilian fleet, broke through the blockade and Grievous jumped to hyperspace. Mace Windu, Ahsoka, and Torrent Company made it to Torbal. There were dead villagers and burning buildings. Protecting the mine, they found Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Taria surrounded by droids. The clones and the new Jedi defeated the droid army, rescuing Obi-Wan, Anakin, Taria, and Torbal. Epilogue. 28 villagers died in the attack. Padme has organized refugee status for all of Torbal's villagers. If they choose to, they can all move to Naboo. After Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Taria said their goodbyes to the villagers, they went back to the fleet with Rex and Ahsoka. Mace Windu stayed talking with Rickard and the villagers about what they would do about the offer from Naboo. The villagers have agreed to live on Naboo. Palpatine and Padme spoke with Mace Windu, Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Yularen over Hollow Conference to wrap up the mission, with praise all around. Obi-Wan is still working on his grief for Taria, who is yet to pass. This was such an incredible book. That's the end of it. It's definitely one of the best Star Wars books I've read in a while. It's always impressive when you have a book that builds on another book because it's just going to bring the emotion from that book, the story, the character development, and it's their developed characters in chapter one, which is huge. The raw emotion present consistently throughout the book, and the lengths of exhaustion Obi-Wan and Anakin go through were intense. It was probably a similar level of tired for Obi-Wan when he traveled to Zagula as this, but for the storytelling aspect, the tiredness went on for an entire book, which just made it feel so oppressive. They were always tired, and they were already tired with the first words of the book, and that was nothing compared to how tired and exhausted and just empty and drained they were by the very end. Very impressive writing and a great story. Let me know your thoughts on Siege down in the comments below. Thank you everybody so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.